Hello everyone, my name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute. Thanks for joining me for Preston's Ponderings. We are doing an in-depth study of Matthew 16, 27 and 28, where Jesus said, The Son of Man will come in the glory of the Father with his angels and shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there are some standing here which shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. I want to continue what I have done earlier in regard to verse 27 and Jesus' statement that he was going to come in judgment. Unfortunately, the great number of commentators completely divorce verse 27 from what goes after, uh, came before and what came after, and they just arbitrarily say, oh, well, this must be an end of time coming. No, it is directly tied, as I've noted several times before, by the Greek connective particle, it's uh, the Greek word gar, translated as for directly connected with Jesus' earlier discussion and prediction of his own suffering and the suffering of his disciples. Now, I want to look real close at this and compare it with one of the major eschatological passages in the New Testament, and we'll continue this uh, for a good little bit. Because you see what Jesus was very clearly predicting in Matthew 16, 27 was the judgment of those who were going to kill him and kill his disciples. Who was that? Well, all we have to do is go back to verse 21 in which Jesus said the Son of Man will go up to Jerusalem and there be betrayed and crucified. Who would betray him? Who would crucify him? Well, there's no doubt whatsoever about that. There's not even any controversy. Judas, of course, betrayed him, but it was the Sanhedrin, it was the Pharisees, it was the scribes, it was the leaders of the Jews who killed Jesus. They put him on trial. They basically coerced Pilate to kill him. Now, it is also those same people that were going to persecute Jesus' followers. Jesus said, if a man will come after me, let him take up his cross and follow me. Okay, notice this. In Matthew 23, and the parallel of Luke chapter 11, 49 and following, Jesus said that it was old covenant Israel that had killed the prophets. He had already predicted his own, own death at the hands of the Jerusalem temple authorities. And now he's saying, behold, I send to you prophets, scribes, and wise men. Some of them you shall scourge and crucify and chase from city to city, that upon you may come all of the righteous blood shed on the earth from righteous Abel unto Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Who was it that Jesus blamed for shedding all of the blood? But notice this, notice this. Once again, in Matthew 16, 23 and following, Jesus said not only was he going to die at the hand of the Jews, his disciples were going to suffer. Well, in Matthew 23 and Luke we Luke 13, Luke 11, Jesus emphatically says it was Old Covenant Jerusalem that was going to send his disciples, in other words, those who were going to take up their cross and follow him, it was Jerusalem that would be guilty of killing his apostles and prophets. Matter of fact, in that passage I alluded to, Jesus said, Luke chapter 13, 31, it is not possible for a prophet to perish outside of Jerusalem. Now, he didn't mean that in, in a geographical, woodenly literal sense, but he meant Jerusalem was the source and the fountain of the persecution of his saints. So, do you see a pattern developing here? Jesus in Matthew 16, 27 and 28, or 21 through 28, predicted his death at the hands of the Jerusalem authorities. He predicted the suffering of his disciples. He predicted his coming in judgment on those who were going to kill him and persecute his disciples. Now then, let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, we know from verse 1 that Paul was addressing the church at Thessalonica. There's no question about who Paul is writing to. There's no question about who Paul is writing about, is there? Not really. 
not unless we want to rip this text completely out of its historical uh, context and apply it to someone and to uh, something and to some time that it had nothing whatsoever to do with when Paul wrote the letter. Well, that would be hardly good hermeneutic, will it? Notice now, Paul four times uses the present participial form of the Greek word thalipsis to speak of how the Thessalonians were being troubled, how they were being persecuted. And he uses the present active indicative, the Greek word posco, of the sufferings that they were enduring. So there's no question that it was the first century Thessalonian Christians that were being persecuted. Now notice what he says in verse 4. It is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation, Philipsis. Now notice what he says. Those who are troubling you. And to give to you who are troubled rest with us, he said, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those that do not know God. Now watch this. Generally speaking, 99.9% .9 of all commentators go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and Paul's saying, oh, well, you know, when Jesus comes, he's going to give us relief from the burden of living in this human experience. That is not what Paul said. Notice what he says. It is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who are tribulating you. Uses the same identical Greek word. Now, you know, let, let me say this real quickly. Unless the persecutors of the Thessalonians were sending the Thessalonians to hell, then this is not about sending the persecutors to hell. God was going to give to the persecutors what the persecutors were giving the Thessalonians. The persecutors were persecuting the Thessalonians. Therefore, the persecutors were going to become the persecuted. Now, I must very quickly close with this. Remember that Matthew 16, 27, 21 through 28, actually, deals with Jesus' coming in judgment in judgment of those who were going to kill him and persecute his disciples. He said that was going to be in, a, in the lifetime of those standing there. Now watch. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, Paul said it, it, it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who are tribulating you. Now ask yourself the question. Who was it that was persecuting the Thessalonian church to thousand years ago. Well, here's something that's absolutely positively irrefutably true. It cannot be refuted any way, shape, form, or fashion, okay? Point number one, it wasn't the Roman Catholic Church. Remember, Paul is dealing with those who are, present tense, troubling you. Point number two, it was not some unknown Eastern European man of sin that Hal Lindsey told us, Grant Jeffrey tells us, most dispensationalists tell us is alive somewhere in Europe today. No, it was a persecuting power that was alive when Paul wrote, so much so that he said, those who are troubling you. Point number three, it was not the Romans. Do you realize that when Paul wrote Thessalonians, the Romans were not persecuting the Christians? Paul said, it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who are troubling you. And then he said, and to give to you who are being tribulated, rest when the Lord Jesus is revealed. Now watch. Very quickly, Matthew 16, 21 and following. Jesus predicted his suffering, the suffering of his disciples, his coming in judgment, of the persecutor and vindication of his saints before all of that audience died. Now watch what Paul does in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. He's writing to a contemporary, very much alive group of Christians and Thessalonians. They were being persecuted at that time. They were being persecuted by the same authorities that were going to kill Jesus, that did kill Jesus, that were persecuting the, the saints at that time just like Jesus said it would be Jerusalem that did it. And Paul said, those who are troubling you, not one day will, 
those who are troubling you will be repaid with tribulation when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven. We have perfect, perfect point-by-point -point parallel. Now, here's the point. As we've already noted, there is absolutely no way that you can make the persecutors of the Thessalonians be anyone except the first century Jews. Was it the Romans? It was not some unknown future Antichrist. It was a living Antichrist at that time. It was not the Roman Catholic Church. It was not New York City. It was no one other than first century Old Covenant Jews. And Jesus, or Paul said, through or to the Thessalonians, Christ was going to turn the tables on the persecutors, give them tribulation at the coming of the Lord, just like Jesus said he was coming in judgment of those who were going to kill him and persecute his disciples. We have perfect, perfect correlation. And that means that Jesus was coming with his angels in judgment in the first century in the judgment of Old Covenant Israel. Hey, we got a lot more. Thanks for joining me for Preston's Ponderings. We'll see you on the flip side.